What I want to show you how to use today is the Singer Hem Stitcher and Pico attachment. And you'll usually find them in these little boxes like this. And it has a number. There's only one of these, and that's the number. And basically, what you'll find in your box is the hem stitcher, a cover plate, and a little screw, a special little screw that you have to have uh, to hold it on the presser foot bar. So when you get these little boxes, what you want to look for is also, hopefully, some instructions in there. If you don't have them, they are kind of readily available online. And in that box, you'll find this monster, this, this hem stitcher attachment, and this plate, and the long neck screw. And you really have to have that special long neck screw. And these plates are very specific for certain machines, so they're not all the same. You have to look for one that's right for your machine. And the machine I have here is a 15. This particular plate fits the 15s, the Singer 15s, and the, and the 201s. And in the manual it shows you, talks about these different plates and why you have to get special ones for your machine. And these are critical, so if you're buying one of these, you want to make sure that you get the right cover plate for your specific machine. And here's the ones for the 127, 128s. I don't know if these fit the 27s and 28s. In the manual it just shows the 127s, but you can see they're very different. And then the featherweight cover plate is also very different because it's set up specifically for the featherweight and for that special little finger on the hook area that'll fit into that groove on the plate. So you have to have the very special and very specific cover plates for your particular machine for this attachment to work for you. And in the very back end of that manual it does show you that basically everything's the same uh, as far as the attachment itself and that thumb screw, but it's the plates that have different identification numbers on them. So be sure to get the right one for your machine. And so here basically let's look at this attachment. It's quite a hairy monster and it's got this piercer on it and one of the things you want to check when you get it and when, you, when you're going to use it, make sure that the point of that piercer is nice and sharp and doesn't have a burr or it isn't bent over at all. If it is, you'll have to file it down and polish it so it's nice and sharp and smooth so it'll go through the fabric easily. And the other thing is on here they've got, this has feeder feet that have rubber bands around them. And those rubber bands are critical, critical for moving the fabric side to side and forward and back and you have to make sure those are not dried out or cracking or you will not get a successful uh, Pico hole for these things. You have to have good feet on those things. Now your needle, they say in the manual, can be an 11 or 14. You want to make sure it's in good shape and no burrs on the end of it. And when you put it on your presser bar, uh, there are two holes on the area where it goes on your presser bar. And the upper one is only for the 10 Singer 101s. The lower one is for all the other machines. So basically your, your feed dogs are set at zero. So they're not doing anything under there under the special plate. And they don't do anything anyway. So basically to put this thing on, you also want to make sure that on the back side, this feed actuating bracket gib is up. For hem stitching and picoing. It can flip down and you use that when you don't use the piercer at all when you're doing applique with this attachment. So it has to be all the way up. So starting out to put this thing on your machine, of course you're going to want to take off your standard cover blade and you'll be using one of the screws from that for most of these attachments. Uh, cover plates. You'll be using one of the screws from that standard plate. You make sure that you get this set in there just right. My particular one has a little peg on the back side that goes in one of the screw holes and another screw in the other one. Set it on there. Make sure that it's down in there really nice and snug. Um, and when you have these plates on, of course, you can bring your bobbin thread up just fine through that little hole. But 
since I've already got my bobbin thread pulled through here I'm just going to feed that in set it down in there make sure it's down now this 115 it dropped in real easy on my 201 it was kind of snug and I had to make sure that that was down flat then you put the screw in and get it nice and tight everything when you're using this attachment has to be really tight so nothing shifts there's a lot of action going on and if things start shifting around you can break needles and dull your piercer and cause problems so you want to make sure it's good and tight and after you get your plate on make sure to check that your needle goes down in through the needle hole just right without hitting and they tell you in the manual to get that needle set exactly in the center of that hole and they tell you to do that by loosening the needle clamp screw and I couldn't mine stayed a little to the right so I had to do some adjusting to get this thing to work right <clears throat> so you get that set up and now we're gonna put this thing on now I struggled quite a bit getting this thing on here first thing you want to do is make sure that advancing arm is up and in one of those little areas of that cog that have a star on it that shows you that it's all that the feet are up the piercers up and the arm is up so I'm trying to set it there see my arms at its highest point there and now I'm going to slide it on over that needle clamp arm screw area and it kind of you got to fidget around with these things because there's a lot of stuff there that everything runs into so you just kind of mess around and try and get that up in there. I had to turn it kind of sideways, I found, to, to get it to go uh, on there. Everything will move that presser bar around, all the junk that's on this attachment. Now I've got the fork of that arm in there. So now I'm going to slide it into the presser foot bar. And getting the alignment of this screw can be kind of tough. I have to really fight with it and move it up and down, move the bar up and down until it finally joins up and you can screw it all the way on and that's how you do it and you want to be sure again that it's very snug so to use a screwdriver to make it sure it's good and snug on there you do not want this thing moving around after you've got that on there the piercer you want to make sure that it's in the right location and there's adjustments you can do for this and I'll show you some of the Things you do but you don't want it hitting anything as it's going up and down and you want it to the left or right depending on where your needle feeds you're going to want to have to adjust this thing to make sure your needle feeds into the hole that it makes just the right way now this thing was hitting that that foot when I first put it in, on and it wasn't working right so I had to adjust it back and so you have to really be sure that things are in the right spot for this to work at all for you otherwise you start clipping fabric with the needle and the holes just are not made right so here it shows you in the manual the different screws that you do to adjust this thing and uh, I found that I had to change all three of these setups to get it to work right there's three different adjustments because your goal is to have that needle just inside that hole on that right side as it sews down as it advances that needle has to go into that open hole so here it shows some of the adjustment areas and that big screw is for that round top thing which actually supports the piercer on the attachment and that thing can be loosened and turn the piercer either vertical or horizontal depending on what you're doing when you're doing picoing and, and hem stitching it's going to be vertical and down into the fabric and you move that you just with that screw there you move that bar that that holds the piercer that's the piercer bar you can move that left and right and then these other screws are how you move that point of that bar forward or back so I had to adjust these and play with these quite a bit to get things to work right so let's go ahead and do some of this and I hope you can see that as I start sewing that the hole is made as the piercer goes down right there you make your little hole the needles behind it so the fabric has to be advanced and so there it sews and then it's going to advance here and now that needle went right 
in the edge of that hole but it was all the way in the hole and not clipping the fabric if it's clipping the fabric you have to work on your adjustments some more so it's not doing that and I found that my piercer had to be a little to the right because of the position of the needle on this machine and this is a one singer 115 machine it's a treadle um, so it's a 15-88 sewing machine and I am using my trail and you want to take your time when you're doing these is this a lot going on with this particular attachment you don't want to rush it or run it fast now you can see here where those rubber bands are so critical that those two feeder feet with the rubber bands on them that is what moves that fabric side to side and back so they have to be in really good condition and grabbing that fabric so you get down one side you lift it up, make sure all, the piercer's up, make sure your feet are up, and now you can turn it. And you have to go down through the other side. So you've sewed just on one side of the hole. Here it's on the left side. And now you're going to want to go back down over it again on the other side. And they call that tracking. So you have to make sure you've got everything lined up and you can put your piercer down in the little first hole. Let it kind of sit there and then drop your feed dogs to hold it in place. And now you can start tracking. And as you do this, just ease into it. Make sure that the piercer is going into the hole. Make sure that your needle is sewing into the open area of the hole as you go. Once you're pretty comfortable that it's doing the right thing and that the tracking is going well, you can go ahead and go a little faster and just keep an eye and guide it with your fingers if you get off track you can kind of stop lift your, everything up make sure everything's up the piercer and the feet and kind of move it around until it's back in position again in the right place and now you're finishing the other side of that hole and again here's where those rubber feed those rubber bands around those feed feet are so critical because it won't advance it e evenly or to the right distance unless those are really grabbing well. The fabric I have here is like a cotton linen. Uh, I did starch it and iron it just to make sure it was nice and flat and firm and that helps with the feeding also. So basically here we're done. You know, I've got sewing on both sides. This is what it should look like and that's how you set it up. So have fun with yours.